Hello and welcome. Today we'll walk through three options to initialize and configure a new VNS3 controller. When you first log in, you'll be prompted to change passwords. Once you've done that, you'll find this Getting Started page. You'll notice you have three options to configure. You can upload a license file. This is great for new VNS3 controllers. You can upload a runtime snapshot. This is ideal if you're old controller has failed or you need to change something, you can take a runtime snapshot and do a one-click restart. Another option for a VNS3, multi-VNS3 topology is to fetch remote configuration. If you have a VNS3 controller currently running, you can grab that configuration and create a new VNS3 automatically. Let's start with uploading a license. When you're uploading a license, simply paste the license you got in an email from Cohesive Networks and click Submit. Next, you'll have the options to configure your license parameters. You can do pre-configured license parameters or custom. For this example, we'll go through some custom options. To start, a quick note about your subnet options. You cannot overlap your VPC and overlay subnets and you must use at least a slash 24 CIDR. Even if you don't plan on using the overlay and you're okay with your data in plain text, remember you just can't overlap VPC and VNS3 subnets. So we'll start with a example in an overlay network. So we should either use a slash 24 or slash 22 CIDR. So for this example, we'll do 192.168.203.0/24. At Cohesive Networks, we like to put VNS3 at the top or the high end of the network ciders, and so you can start your client packs at the beginning. So we'll make the controller IPs 192, 168, 203, and 192.168.203. 252. Our controller VIP will be 192.168.203.254. And here we have eight client IPs that we can use. So we can do either a range or type them all out with commas. We'll just do 192.168. 203.1 through 192, 168, 203.8. Click Submit and Reboot. And once your controller reboots, you can refresh and you'll see this page again. In order to finish configuring, you need to either fetch keyset or generate new. For this we'll generate a new one. And we'll call this topology VNS3A and give it a security token. And then once that completes, the final step is to peer controllers. Click on controller peering. You have the option of peering other controllers in a topology. In this example this is the first one we're setting up, so make controller 1 this instance. And we'll save controller 2 for later, so we'll leave it as not set. Click Save Changes, and this will complete your configuration. You can always go back and add more controller peers later. And once it's finished on your status page, you should see your controller ID, your keyset checksum, and your IP addressing. For the next example, we'll go to another VNS3 controller. After you log in, again, you'll get this Getting Started page. This time we'll click on Upload Snapshot. We'll choose a snapshot that we saved a few days ago. Click Submit and Reboot. And once your controller resets, you'll, you can go to the status page to see your keyset checksum and controller IPs here. And for the final option, we will go to the VNS3 Lite Edition. The only difference here on your getting started page is that your license is either is already built in, so you have the option just to go straight to configuring license parameters. 
you can still upload a snapshot or do remote configuration. So for this example, we'll do remote configuring. So we'll grab the private IP of our first VNS3 and enter our security token. So it will fetch the keys from VNS3A and then reboot. And after it finishes rebooting, and we'll figure, finish with controller peering. So we'll peer this with VNS3A. Grab the public IP. And controller 2 is this instance. Then over in controller A, we'll finish that peering step. And after you peer both controllers, you can click on runtime status and see that in the links to other controllers, it should have the remote controller IP and that it is up and reachable.